Hey guys, we're ready to wrap up our study in Colossians, and I'm a little bit sad about it. I love Colossians. I have loved walking verse by verse through Colossians with each one of you. Uh, so today we're gonna end. We're gonna end the book. We're gonna pick up in chapter four, verse seven. If you want to turn your Bible to that section of scripture, and you know, some people, I believe, almost me, you know, sometimes that we'll get to the ending and we'll be like, you know, this is just really like. Paul ending his letter to these people. And, you know, what can I glean from that? But I want to share with you the title that I kind of gave this section because I really started to think about how important this section is. But it was real people in real life doing real ministry. That's what we see at the end of this letter. We absolutely see it, that Paul names names and talks about people that are not only encouraging and loving him and serving him while he's in prison, but that more important than that, that they love the Lord and they are serving the Lord. So it's real life with real people and real ministry. And the other fun part about this video is I'm going to butcher multiple names. I'm going to say them all wrong. And so y'all can correct me in the comments. I would love that because I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to pronounce them correctly. So pick up with me in verse seven and let's see the first person that he mentions by name. He says, as to all my affairs, Tychius, our beloved brother and faithful servant and fellow bond servant in the Lord will bring you information. So it says that Tychius is a brother in Christ, that he's a faithful servant, and that he's a fellow bond servant of the Lord. You know, those are great things. Wouldn't you love for somebody to say that about you? That's what Paul says about Tychius. And he said his ministry right now is he's going to bring back some information. And you know, that wouldn't have been easy. Once again, Paul's in prison. Look at verse eight and it says, for I have sent him to you for this very purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. And so what he was gonna bring back to them was that they would know how Paul was doing and, and, that, and that really what prison was like and how, you know, what, how was Paul doing? You know, they would be concerned for him. And it's, he said it was going to encourage their hearts because, you know, Paul was doing greater ministry maybe in prison than he would have been if he would have been free. And so then it says in verse 9, And with him, Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of your number, they will inform you about the whole situation here. And you know, if you study scripture, if you study the New Testament before, we know that Onesimus was this uh, slave that had run away. And he tells us here, and if you want to know more about him, you can go to Philemon. But um, he uh, was a beloved brother, faithful and he was a member of this body of believers. He was a member of this church that uh, Paul was writing to. And he said he will inform you about the situation here as well. Then verse 10, Aristarchus. That is not how you say it. I'm just going to skip it. I don't know. A, my fellow prisoner sends you his greetings. And also Barnabas, cousin Mark, about whom you received, instru received instructions if he comes to you welcome him. And you know, we've heard of Barnabas, that great encourager, you know, that go, had been with Paul before. And then we know Mark, that Mark writ, wrote the book of Mark. And we know that if you know a little bit about uh, scripture, that Mark and Paul actually had a disagreement and they kind of parted ways. And so he says here, though you see, he says, if he comes to you, welcome him. You know, because probably they had heard that. And, you know, I thought about that too, that, you know, real people in real life and real ministry, I mean, sometimes we're not going to agree. And sometimes we really and truly might go different directions, but we're still serving the Lord and we should still wel welcome one another. Then it says, and also Jesus, who is called Justice, these are the only fellow workers for the kingdom of God who were from the circumcision and they have proved to be an encouragement to me. And so Paul says, you know, Paul's ministry was primarily to the Gentiles, but these were some Jewish believers that had been an encouragement to me, him. So he mentions justice by name. Then he says, Epaphras, I think I said that wrong in the first video, so I apologize for that, who is one of your member. We know that he's the one that the letter started out with because Epaphras, maybe, had gone to Paul to get him to write the letter because he was the lay person that started the church. And so he says, a bond slave of Jesus who is always laboring earnestly for you 
in his prayers that you may stand perfect and fully assured in everything in the will of God. That, you know, he's saying, hey, this guy, you know, he's your leader. You know, he's, he's really leading this church. And he said, you know, that he prays that you'll stand perfect. You know, he, he kind of talks about his motives, you know, that he came to Paul to get the letter to address the false teaching. And he said, you know, he wants what's best for you. He wants you to be fully assured in the will of God. And we should want that for other believers as well. And it says, for I testify for him that he has a deep concern for you and for those who are in Laodicea and Her Heropolis. You know that, I mean, they probably were a little upset with him. Like, why are you going and telling Paul our business? But, you know, he's, he's reassuring them that, hey, this is what needed to happen. That, that Epaphras has done this because he loves you and he wants what's best for you. And he wants you to know the truth. Know the truth. And then he says, Luke, the beloved physician, sends you greetings as, as also Demas. You know, and we know that Luke wrote the book of Luke. And we know that he was a physician. And so he mentions him. And do you see how this is building those layers of truth? That you can trust scripture. It's naming these folks by name. And it says, greet the brethren who are in Laodicea. And Laodicea, and also Nypha. Nym Nympha. I don't know. I don't know. But hey, it's a lady who has a church in her house. That it names her by name. You know, that's a big deal that this lady had opened up her home to have a home church in it. So he mentions her. And then it says, when this letter is read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans and you for your part, read my letter that is coming from Laodicea. Say to Arch Archippus, take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that you may fulfill it. So he mentions another guy by name and he talks about the letter to Laodicea. And then he says, and I love that he said that you've received the ministry that you have received in the Lord. You know, that's the only kind of ministry there is. And do you know that each one of us has one? We've talked about so much about how that practical everyday living, you know, that's where your ministry really and truly is in our homes in our workplaces. He's already addressed all these things. And you know, so that means that we're all in the ministry. We really and truly are. And if we viewed our daily lives like that, how it would be so different. And this is, I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my imprisonment. Grace be with you. And so that's how Paul ends this precious, wonderful, practical letter to the Colossian church, but also to Laodicea. And we know that it was probably read in many other places. But I hope that you've seen that how we need to hit false doctrine head on. You don't play with it. And the reason you don't need it is because we are complete in Christ. And can we remember that, we're, that we too are real people in real life, in real ministry, and that we are complete in Christ.